The TCS Tiger's Claw, a legendary carrier flying for the Terran Confederation during the Terran Kilrathi War, participating in the fiercest and most important fighting of the Vega Sector campaign. Her presence was often the deciding factor in numerous engagements across Confederation territory, eventually culminating into the strike she led against the Kilrathi High Command Starbase that would lead to the liberation of the Vega Sector. In 2642, with the Kilrathi War in full swing, Confederation Fleet Command recognizes the need for a heavy carrier on the front lines. Designs are then drawn up for a new class of starship, the Bengal. Soon afterwards, the Trojan Force shipyards would win the contract to manufacture this new line of carriers, and a new chapter in Confederation naval history would soon begin. This would be around the time when construction of the Tiger's Claw would commence. Interestingly enough, she would be initially laid down as the Tiger Claw, but when she was commissioned, her name became the Tiger's Claw. While the former name is considered valid by historians, popular culture preferred the latter name instead. Two years later, in 2644, the TCS Tiger's Claw was launched and began its shakedown cruise. However, this would be no ordinary trip to iron out the bugs of a newly minted ship. The Claw found herself in the path of a Kilrathi invasion force that had infiltrated themselves into Confederation space. Due to its mission, the Tiger's Claw only had a skeleton crew and a command staff that was under-experienced in combat. Despite that, the Kilrathi were unable to get past the Claw. With her crew going beyond the call of duty and some clever tactics by the command staff, the Kilrathi were forced into a full retreat from Confederation space. Regardless of being heavily outmatched and outpowered, the Tiger's Claw had already begun to establish its reputation as an elite fighting vessel with a penchant for victory. It would be a reputation that would only continue to grow from this point. Soon after her first taste of battle with the Kilrathi, the Tiger's Claw would be assigned to the Vega Sector where it would see heavy action with the Cats for most of her career. Her next significant operation would be in 2649, when Terran Marines launched an attack on a heavily fortified Kilrathi world. But as they began their assault, the Marines were ambushed by Kilrathi fighters guarding the planet that Confed intelligence simply was unaware of. Forced into a rout, the Marines desperately retreat back to friendly space with the Kilrathi in hot pursuit. The Tiger's Claw was ordered away from its post in Vega to cover for the retreat by intercepting and delaying the Kilrathi forces. In a climactic battle against overwhelming odds, the carrier and her crew held the line long enough to get the Marines to safety. The fighting would prove to be so intense that historians would look back on this battle and give it the name of Custer's Carnival, presumably named after American Colonel George Custer in his infamous last stand at the Battle of Little Bighorn. But it would not be without cost. 75% of her engines were destroyed, and half of her pilots were listed as casualties. Many medals, including two gold stars, would be awarded to its crew, often posthumously. The damage to the Tiger's Claw herself was so critical that she had to spend the next six months in space dock. In 2653, the Tiger's Claw would be host to the 201st Plebe class of the Confederation Naval Academy due to heavy losses on the front lines. The cadets would replace the regular crew for flight operations while continuing their instruction aboard the Claw, all while under the command of then Commodore Jeffrey Tolwyn. This stint as an Academy ship did not last into 2654, and the Tiger's Claw would resume her regular duties. The timing could not have been better either, as Confed High Command had received news that a Kilrathi fleet had destroyed Pegasus Station, based near the Charybdis Quasar. Pegasus was important as it had a navigation computer that could take advantage of the Quasar to jump ships across the Vega Sector. Presumably, the calculations would be too complex for a shipboard computer to do, facilitating the need to have the nav computer on the Pegasus do the math and then transmit its results to the intended ship. But now, with the destruction of Pegasus Station and the assumed capture of the nav computer, the Kilrathi would be able to bypass Confed forces completely and be within striking distance of the Sol system, with the Tiger's Claw being the only one to intercept the fleet in time, as all other Confederation ships were scattered on the front line and would arrive too late. In a desperate running battle, the Claw was able to delay the fleet long enough for Earth to ready its defenses. Using the intelligence gained by the Tiger's Claw in her delaying action, Commodore Tolwyn was able to counter the Kilrathi invasion and wipe out their fleet as they entered Seoul, thus narrowly averting a catastrophic end to the war thanks in large part to a tenacious carrier and Tolwyn's strategic vision. By the latter half of 2654, 
the Vega Sector campaign had begun to turn in favor for the Confederation due to the hard work of the Tiger's Claw and her pilots in the Sector. Terran intelligence had discovered that the Kilrathi High Command were orchestrating the war from an Imperial starbase in the Venice system. If Confed could take this system and destroy the base, they could deal a severe blow to the Kilrathi Imperial Command, and humanity would have a real chance at regaining control of the Vegas Sector for the first time since the start of the war. The Tiger's Claw was called upon to deliver this knockout blow to the Kilrathi Empire. A small but elite squadron of fighters was launched and succeeded in destroying the starbase. At the loss of so many of their military leadership, Kilrathi operations across the sector would be shattered, and the remnants of the Imperial High Command would relocate themselves to Kilra. Once again, the Tiger's Claw and her crew triumphed over the Cats, delivering the first major victory for the Terran Confederation. But the war was not over, and the Claw would have yet more opportunities to fight on behalf of humanity. The Venerable Carrier would see action in two more operations of historical significance. The first being the destruction of a unique Sivar class dreadnought carrying a new superweapon called the Proton Accelerator Gun, also known as the Graviton Weapon, that rendered the Terran colony of Godard a complete ruin in one shot. The second operation was the disruption of the Kilrathi Sivar Ishad ceremony in the planet of Fyarka, which resulted in the severe hampering of enemy morale and bringing into Confed's ranks the first Kilrathi defector in history, Rauga Narhalis and his frothy cruiser. Two years later in 2656, the Tiger's Claw would be stationed in the Enigma Sector. Its last battle would be an operation in the Kitithrak Mang system in an attempt to eliminate the Kilrathi Sector headquarters based there. Unfortunately, while most of its fighters were away on patrol and scouting missions, a trio of Kilrathi stealth fighters had managed to slip past the Confederation pilots and destroy the Tiger's Claw. Only those who were already sortied managed to survive this disaster. The blame for this loss was placed solely on Christopher Maverick Blair, who reported that the Kilrathi were utilizing stealth technology on their fighters for the first time in the war. But with his flight recorder mysteriously missing, he could not prove what he claimed, and Blair would be charged with negligence. It would be many years before the true fate of the Tiger's Claw would be revealed. The Tiger's Claw was a Bengal-class strike carrier that had the distinction of being both the longest and heaviest in its class. As future Bengal carriers would be redesigned slightly starting with the TCS Kipling in 2645. The Tiger's Claw was armed with only eight sets of dual laser turrets for point defense, located at various points along the hull. Her defenses were roughly on par with a standard Exeter class destroyer with the claws shields rated at 21 cm armor equivalent in both fore and aft sections. Her armor was heavier than the Exeter's, however. With 25 cm of armor on both port and starboard sides, 24 cm at the front, and a mere 20 cm at the rear. When it comes to speed and maneuverability, the Tiger's Claw can achieve a maximum velocity of 130 km per second with 100 kps being her safe cruising speed. Unfortunately, Confed engineers rated the claw's acceleration as poor, and her maximum yaw, pitch, and roll were rated at 1 degree per second for all three. She was the beefiest gal in her ship class, after all. As her primary role was the launching and retrieval of strike craft, the claw was expected to stay away from gun battles with Kilrathi destroyers and cruisers and instead rely on its birds for offense and defense, but she could more than defend herself in a confrontation, as she was designed for deep space operations without an escort, and often operated in such a fashion. While the Tiger's Claw had some of the heaviest shielding and armor in the Confederation Navy, numbers-wise she was outperformed by her Kilrathi counterpart, the Snakir Carrier, in terms of shield and armor ratings, as well as top speed. When it comes to her fighter complement, the Claw could hold up to 104 strike craft, with at least four squadrons being known to have served between 2649 to 2656. They are the Killer Bees, Flying Hornets, the Blue Devils, Flying Scimitars, the Star Slayers, Flying Raptors, and the Black Lions, Flying the newly introduced Rapier Fighter. Beyond the raw numbers, however, it should be pointed out that the Tiger's Claw was home to many famous pilots that would go on to have distinguished careers in the Confederation, such as James Paladin Taggart, whose work in covert operations would eventually lead to the destruction of Kilra, and then onto a senatorial position in the Confederation government after the war. Jeanette Angel Devereaux, who would go on to become wing commander of the TCS Concordia, 
then move on to Covert Ops for a critical infiltration mission to kill Ra that would identify the means to destroy the planet. Michael Iceman Casey, a renowned fighter pilot famous for his complete emotional detachment under fire and perfect flying technique. His son Lance Casey would later go on to enlist in the Confederation Space Forces as a pilot and be an integral part of the TCS Midway's efforts in the Nephilim War. Ian Hunter St. John, an Australian pilot who would be instrumental in the Fyrkin campaign, and later join Paladin's Black Op mission to scout the Hakaga fleet. He would go on to sacrifice himself in order to save Paladin's ship, and guarantee that the Confederation would know of the secret fleet buildup. Todd Maniac Marshall, an ace pilot who would fight some of the most important battles of the Terran Kilrathi War, the Black Lance Incident, and the Nephilim War. He would also go on to author his best-selling autobiography, ME! The Life and Battles of Todd Maniac Marshall. And last, but far from least, Christopher Maverick Blair, the destroyer of Kilra, the heart of the tiger, and the man who brought down the Black Lance conspiracy. His accomplishments would require an entirely separate video in order to do them justice. Actually, that might not be a bad idea. The Tiger's Claw was proof that the right ship, paired with the right crew, could be the difference between victory and defeat. Her name would forever be remembered alongside other legendary Confederation ships, such as the Concordia, the Victory, and the Midway. Whatever awaits for the future of the Terran Confederation, no one will ever forget the name Tiger's Claw. Alright, so you've probably noticed the difference between the History Tiger's Claw and the Tech Breakdown Claw. The simple answer is that Clav's Tiger's Claw for Wing Commander Saga was the easiest way to get the screenshots I needed for this video. But when it came down to doing the tech stuff, it seemed strange to me to use a model that took such creative liberties in her design for the tech overview. That's when I found images of this other model by Howard Day that was more in line with the official game's depictions of the claw. So I ended up using that instead for the tech section. You might have also noticed I included references to Academy in the movie. Remember Wing Commander Arena? Well, apparently the devs really were wing nuts and created this in-universe PDF magazine called Star Soldier that had various lore nuggets in a full timeline of the universe, up to the start of the Nephilim War. And guess what? They integrated callbacks to Academy in the movie, but they made sure to keep it as vague as possible in order to fit better with the established games. The community seems to have embraced Arena's lore book as canon, so it felt remiss to not bring its stuff into the video. I tried to follow the same route by keeping it vague, but one really important note from the movie that might have been a stretch on my part was for the reason as why Pegasus Station was important. Star Soldier never gave a reason, it just said its loss put Soul at risk, which seemed odd to me. So I tried to explain the importance of Pegasus with info from the movie. Yes, it is a very grey area game canon-wise, I admit so you can take or leave my rationale, or until a lore authority gives a proper answer on this. And that's all for today, kiddies and apes. Peace.